Hello trail travelers. Today we're going to hit Mosquito Pass outside of Alma, Colorado. And if everything goes right, we'll get over the pass and we'll come down into Leadville at the end of the day. Uh, it's a little smoky today, so the views aren't going to be as good as I would like because of huge forest fire, but we're going to do the best we can. So stay right there. We'll be right back. So the story kind of goes that when they were holding a town meeting here back in the uh, mid 1800s that they were trying to decide on the name of the town and nobody could agree on anything. Well, someone opened up a book and there was a mosquito squished between two pages and mosquito it was. Everybody agreed that that was an appropriate name for the town and it's been mosquito ever since. And the last time I was here, which was a few years ago, about the same, probably a little later in the season, uh, it definitely lived up to its name. When we were walking around the mines, there was a ton of mosquitoes. So, big recommendation when coming out here is bug spray, number one. Uh, if you don't have any or you forgot some, then I would say any time that you stop, make sure that the windows are all rolled up and that you keep the door shut as much as possible because you will very likely end up with some skeeters. Even back there at the very beginning where I was airing down, there ended up being a few mosquitoes that came into the vehicle. And these aren't, these aren't little guys either. I mean, they're some of the biggest mosquitoes I've ever seen. I don't think they can quite carry Sonia away, but they're definitely some, uh, some good sized mosquitoes around here. Now when you get to the fork in the road, you actually can go either left or right. The right side is the quote unquote correct way to go, but they both will end up uh, kind of rejoining. But I try and avoid the left side because there's more private property down there. So we're going to stay to the right here. There was a sign there that said four wheel drive vehicles only, and we are in four wheel drive. so. We're just gonna have a nice leisurely cruise today. We should be able to see some mines. The weather's great. Right now it's 66 degrees and this is August 22nd. So it is definitely the middle of summer and it's only 66 degrees here today. Like I said, unfortunately though, we just don't have really nice skies because of a big forest fire that's about, uh, it's probably 75 miles west of us. And it's blowing all the smoke back here. So unfortunately, not the best views today, but it still should be really, really pretty. The road is definitely rocky. <laughs> there's some areas where there's some really nice sized chunks coming out out of the road with really no way to get around them so I highly recommend that you air down before uh, hitting the trail here it will make for a much smoother ride I actually went down further than I was planning on I was only going to go down to about 18 or 19 pounds and didn't really pay attention and my uh, JT Brooks deflators were set to 15 so I'm at 15 and I'm awfully glad I'm at 15 because this would be kind of a jaw-rattling trail if I had a lot more air in. I mean the difference between 15 and 20 wouldn't have been that big of a deal but 
I'm, I'm pretty glad it went down to, to 15 because it's definitely making for a smoother ride through here. It's definitely pretty. Uh, up ahead, we can see one of the mines and we'll stop and check that out because it should be pretty cool. It's kind of why I did this uh, today. I just wanted a nice, easy ride where I didn't have any passengers today. Just wanted to take it easy and go at my own pace. And Mosquito Pass is definitely an easy one to go on. Um, if you find yourself out here alone with no other vehicles and something happens, it can definitely be a long walk back somewhere. But on a weekend like this, this is a Saturday, I mean, there's another vehicle that we were airing down with and we're kind of going at the same pace. There's three more vehicles that we passed that will be heading up. I suspect we will see a handful of people today. So shouldn't be too big of an issue if something happens out here by myself, but you know, you should always arrange to go with, with somebody just in case. But this isn't a trail where you could, you know, flip over, or, you know, roll or something. It's not gonna be like that. It's more, uh, you know, you'd have to have a mechanical breakdown. That's why I always have a spare and a tire repair kit. So I can definitely get out of that situation. But if I should have an engine or a transmission problem and I need to get towed out of here, it's always good to know that there's people around. So in a few minutes, we'll be uh, checking out one of the first mines. So you're going to get to this intersection here and you do not want to go straight. So right there you see that uh, 856. That's not how we want to go. Now you can go there and it's very narrow and you'll probably get some pinstriping going up but you can go and uh, you know if you're just up here to like spend the day yeah go ahead go up that road but if we're just trying to get over Mosquito Pass we want to make a left right there and you can see the the road stays much more narrow and more driven on <laughs> versus that section which can be pretty rough so we'll just keep heading up the road here if you weren't already in four low you're going to want to hit it right before you get on the hairpin and start going up this rock wall here. It's pretty, it's not super steep, but it uh, it's definitely rocky and you're gonna wanna take your time. So get yourself in four low and just uh, kinda crawl your way up it. We got a big dip here. nothing too crazy just got to take it nice and slow through here and this is one of those places where we say you want to drive on the rocks not over the rocks 
And what that means is you want your tires on the biggest rocks so that you have the most ground clearance. If you try and drive over them, meaning you have your tires on either side, well, then you might actually scrape on something. But if you put your tires on the biggest rocks and drive on them, then you're going to have the most ground clearance and you're going to avoid any scraping. But really what I'm seeing here is pretty much a stock Jeep, stock Tacoma, you know, something like that is not going to have any problems going up this. I said, you do want to be in a four wheel low gear and you don't want to do this in two wheel drive. You may end up slipping a little bit, but four wheel drive in a low gear and just crawl it right up. I'm just in a manual two working my way up and we're just cruising. You good? definitely interesting being somewhere that it's 64 degrees at the end of August and there's snow on the ground so yeah kind of kind of trippy to see that but very cool though you know gotta love it just tells you it does get kind of cold around here let me go back straight here we got 
just a beautiful, beautiful area. So we're coming up over this little pass that was really rocky. And I'm trying to see what we've got going on here. I haven't I haven't been over here before. I've only been up to that mine before. But what a view. Oh, this is just beautiful. Just kind of soaking it in a little bit. I wish it, there wasn't so much smoke today. Definitely is cutting down on the visibility. Well, this just a beautiful area. And coming up, I've seen, um, I've passed a, a number of stock Jeeps. Most of them did have some upgraded tires on them. I wouldn't come up here in street tires. You're just really not going to have much traction. But a good all-terrain or mud tire is going to do just fine. I've seen a couple motorcycles. That seems kind of fun. Not my cup of tea on a motorcycle, it's just a little too rough, but definitely doable. And we're still climbing. Let's see where we're at. I'm gonna bring up the off-road pages. See what we got going on. But this view is just super good. I really love it. Let's see, we are at 12,000 718 feet and I know we still have a ways to go before we're at the highest point. If you see over there to the left there's quite a bit of snow over there still. It's definitely a fun trail. I wouldn't call it hard. I'm not even sure I would call this moderate at this point. It's just a really, really rocky road. But coming up on this rocky place after the London mine, you do need to really be mindful of anyone else that might be coming down because there are some really narrow spots and there's just not a lot of room to be passing anywhere. But certainly any stock Jeep, Tacoma, 4Runner, you know, is not going to have any problem coming up here. There's ATVs, there's some side-by-sides, you know, everyone's having a good time. It's a, just a really great view. We're coming up here on an ATV and it looks like a side-by-side -side is coming up. And my only issue with doing an ATV or a side-by-side -side up here is once you get all the way to one side, you have to turn around and head back the other direction. That's definitely the main reason I went with the Jeep is so on places like this where I end up in another town, I can just kind of keep going, get back on the road turn around and go home, go somewhere else. I don't have to turn around and go all the way back to the beginning of where I started. Well, we passed the top of Mosquito Pass at over 13,180 feet. Uh, a little higher than that, I think, because we're already starting to head down the other side. <clears throat> now, this side is a little different. We're on a shelf road here. If you don't like that, yeah, you might want to, you know, think about this a little bit before doing it. It's really 
<laughs> far down there it looks uh kind of hard to see but i'm i'm fairly confident it's pretty darn steep but there's plenty of room uh now if another vehicle comes up it's going to get really really tight but i'm not too worried about that the view is fantastic really hazy because of the fire unfortunately otherwise the view would be phenomenal but this is really cool i've never been on this side of the pass before so it's surprisingly completely different the view is different uh, i mean this road is kind of the same I mean, we've been on this rocky terrain but this shelf road is uh, it's a little different it doesn't bother me at all especially because i'm on the driver's side but uh if someone's a little timid be uh, something to be aware of but so far i mean a handful of stock jeeps i i will say mostly rubicons um but you know for here in colorado if you're going to do stuff like this you're probably buying a rubicon just so that you have the lockers the electronic sway bar disconnect you know those types of things it's got a little bit more lift already and it's going to come with all-terrain tires so a rubicon right off the factory floor is very well suited for doing this where you know a sport you know you're probably going to want to change the tires don't need a lift or anything uh, sport can definitely handle this and most of the time i've just been well i've been in four low the entire time and mostly i've just been in manual one or manual two and just kind of cruising along now i see there's like four vehicles coming up and seeing has seen as though they're coming up they're going to have technically the right of way so as i get closer i'm gonna i'm gonna want to be the one to try and find a spot to pull over and give them some room so it's going to be a little while before i have to worry about it but something to be a little cognizant of on this shelf road so it looks like they may be stopping so maybe eh, maybe i'll catch up to them or get to uh, a better location Well, we're continuing down the back side of Mosquito Pass here. Beautiful day. We've got these little lakes over here off to the driver's side. Seen more activity on this side with ATVs and side-by-sides than the other side. Now again, I, I did get a kind of an early start this morning and I came in from Alma so anybody I would have seen early on would have had to have basically come from that side or had to go really far. If you just come up to like London Mill and turn around, well, I probably would never have seen them because they would have been there and gone. But now I've seen, uh, you know, I see a, more people coming up from the Leadville side, but they have to go as far as they want and then turn around and go back. So as much as I wanted a side-by-side, -side, and you know, maybe someday I'll get one for certain situations, but I, on this particular road, you're going between two cities. So it's kind of nice not to have to backtrack. I don't get to see the same things twice. <laughs> but definitely a, a fairly easy trail, it's rocky, we got those shelf roads. They're, they're, 
there's a couple obstacles that are totally optional. You absolutely do not need to take those if you don't want. You can just bypass them as I watched other people do. So not a big deal if you don't want to take a couple harder lines. And we've got a Cherokee coming up. At least right here we got plenty of room to pass. A good one. We've already dropped 2,000 feet, so we're down to 11,700 feet from 13,000. Came down pretty quick, I gotta say. And it, <laughs> funny thing is, it feels warmer, but it's actually cooler. It's only 64 degrees right now. But we do have some nice sun, even if it's a little obscured by the smoke. but not too bad at all. Well, we're coming around the side of the lakes there. As we're dropping in altitude here, we're getting down to the tree line. Some nice pine trees. Some, you know, little flowing water here, because uh, as you saw, there was still snow up there. So there's snow melt coming down the road. Just past a little convoy of about six vehicles. It's totally stock Wrangler with street tires. So, I mean, I don't know uh, what's further this way. that They were coming towards me this direction. So I don't know if it's easier or not. Um, and honestly, I mean, he can make it all the way. I mean, he can get all the way to, to Alma. It's just going to be a little rough going on those street tires. Now, maybe if he aired down a little bit, that'll help. But I prefer something with a little more tread because on those rocks, they are, they move around a lot. And having some traction is definitely a good thing. But it's still uh, 64 degrees. Really nice. Got a little more active of a structure over on our left here. I think it's, you know, it's probably some kind of mine operation or forestry operation. But it's definitely getting cool, uh, you know, change of view, a cool change of view as we come down in altitude and get down to the tree line. And looking straight across the valley there, we can see some more old mines. So hopefully we get up to those and we can get some other cool photos. Here's some remnants of an old mine. Kind of cool that this stuff is right on the road. Kind of creep up on it here. Very, very cool. If this is the type of stuff that you like, these old mines, old abandoned buildings, ghost towns, then I think you're really gonna like this drive. There's a lot of structures that are all the way on the ground now. They're just flat out, they're just flat on the ground, but you can tell that they were buildings, you know, they a wall fell over and collapsed and you can still see it but it's all laying flat pretty cool stuff like that number of buildings quite a few mines and if you go off the beaten path a little bit more there's even more stuff so you could spend probably all you know easily a whole day just exploring this area and there's a trail 
that goes off to the left over there and looks like it goes up into the hills so I'm not really sure what uh, you know what's over that direction over here we have uh, it's on the map it says this is famous mine so why don't we just go check it out see what's up here So definitely a lot of people come up here. Oh, there's a structure over on the left. You can see the foundations over here. We'll see where this goes. It goes without saying that you should always be prepared. And there's people who have said, I'm probably a little over-prepared for some things. And I don't think so. I actually don't think I'm prepared enough for some things. Fortunately, I was prepared today. And somehow my air hose, when I'm going to air back up, is split. And that was not doing a very good job of filling the tires up. I was like, wow, it's really taking a long ass time to fill these tires up. And I figured out that there was actually two nicks in this air hose. And fortunately I had a knife and was able to cut it. And it was right near the end. So it was fortunate it wasn't in the middle. I would have had to uh, cut it shorter, but this is actually the one that is on the compressor itself. So it's a, about a two foot hose and I had to cut about six inches off. So it wasn't too bad. So. For a knife, I have this guy right here. And it is a, it says custom design ER274. I got this on Amazon. I, I'm not sure exactly how much it was, 20 bucks or so. And what I like is it has a really nice blade on it. This hook up here is for like cutting a strap, like a seat belt, if someone's stuck in it. And it has a little serrated spot that you could really grind something up with it. So really handy knife. And I keep this in the Jeep on the my uh, Way of Life CB bar so that it's always handy in case I need it. And today I needed it. So I'll actually put the price right below here along with the link to it. And I'll have a link in the description if you're looking for a good trail knife to have. I think this is a really good one. Oh, Elk Ridge. That's the name of it right there. Elk Ridge. So I'll have a link in the description. Uh, guess you can never be too prepared, right? Well, this is the end of it. We've hit asphalt. So that's uh, Alma to Leadville via Mosquito Pass. Fun day, beautiful drive, fairly easy. Like I said, any stock vehicle, you know, stock Jeep or anything, probably even um, uh, maybe some Subarus or something like that. There's only a couple spots where you actually need some some ground clearance, but as long as you're not running really small tires, you're going to be fine. But you do need four wheel drive. That is going to be a must if you plan on doing the whole thing. If you come from Leadville and just go up to London Mine, yeah, you probably still want four wheel drive just because it's really steep, but the other side is really loose rock. So you want as much grip as you can, air down for best results and enjoy it. So this has been Kerry with Trail Traveler. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more. We're always out looking around for some of the best trails in Colorado and wherever else we end up. Thanks for watching everybody. Please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps us out to grow the channel. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.